Welcome back to a star in a simulator car, the series where we have guests come in and try out our £100,000 simulator, all for the bragging rights of who's the fastest. Today's guest is a very familiar voice on the YouTube scene. It is Chain Bear F1. Welcome to Hi. a star in a simulator car. It's nice to be here, Hayden. I'm going to call you Stuart because, of course, that is your real name. How did you come up with the, uh, the channel name Chain Bear F1? Uh, well, it's a long and not that interesting story, but it... Um, it came from a mishearing of the word chamber okay. <laughs> in a uh, weird drawing game my partner at the time, um, about 10 years ago, used to play. And then it just kind of stuck. And then when I had to choose a t Twitter handle, that was already in my head. Chain Bear F1. There we go. So, sorted. Yeah. So I was originally just Chain Bear, but then when I started yeah. doing this gig, Very good. I um, created this side branch, Chain Bear F1. How did you get into what you do? Because, you know, you are the voice and the the channel to go to when people want to get into Formula One, find out rules, regulations, and any new rules and regulations that come in. But how did that all start for you? Um, it started when the uh, three tyre compound rule came in. Yeah. Um, and the FIA in the way that they do didn't really explain it that well. They, they put out like a press release in very technical language and everyone in the F1 community was kind of scratching their heads and saying, I don't really understand how this works. So I. I don't know why I thought video, but I thought I'm going to make it because I was quite good at PowerPoint at the time. I yeah. Think. So I just sort of made this PowerPoint based video with a voiceover on the top uh, explaining how it all worked and put it on a YouTube channel that I sort of made on a whim. Didn't really think about it and then came back a month later and it had like 20,000 views, which wow. at the time yeah. was a lot considering I didn't have a YouTube channel. Yeah, exactly. It's very good. Um, so then I thought, oh, okay, maybe have people have an interest in you know finding yeah. things out in a slightly more relaxed way so I made a couple more videos and then kind of disappeared for a year because I yeah. was quite busy um, but then what we're talking about December 2017 I sort of went back into it and thought I'm going to give this a proper go and mm -hmm. I, I learned how to use After Effects yeah I guess kind of <laughs> and, uh, and now that's what I'm doing kind of full time yeah now you're over 200,000 subscribers yeah last month which I hit 200,000 which is just a mega achievement yeah it's, it's, I don't know where they all came from, but yeah. I'm really, <laughs> I'm glad for them, yeah. Well, you, you have that viewership that just wants to know, get to know F1 a bit more, and you know, you do such good explanation videos that cut it down to, you know, simple talk. It's not necessarily all of this racing jargon, it's, you know, very simple, very easy to sort of get your head around for new fans. Yeah, so I, I think, think that's probably where they all come from. There was definitely a niche there between, I think, what the broadcasters and maybe like magazines and stuff tend to do, which is like, very jargony and if you don't understand yeah. the jargon you're missing a lot or being incredibly condescending <laughs> like, yeah this is a tire um you know if you can talk to people who just want to know the basics but don't want to feel like they're idiots i think that's that's where i sort of fit in here. yeah it's like you can know this and then if you know this you can understand f1 and enjoy it more i mean it's perfect for everyone really as well because new regulations come in and new rules come yeah. in and you're straight on that explaining them like for example 2014 when the engine stuff come in nobody even f1 fans didn't really know what was going on yeah. there and what all the different stuff meant so to have those videos explaining it it makes it a whole lot better yeah and i my i like to hope that people can watch f1 and feel empowered to kind of understand it more and then when people do use jargon they'll be like okay i know what's going on here yeah or when people make strategic calls in the middle of the race they'll be like okay that's because the tires behave in this way or this is this, this kind of track and so on it's yeah. nice but yeah and you're venturing into formula e as well uh, yes, I think Formula E's, oh, it's very controversial among yeah. like F1 fans, but I think <laughs> Formula E's uh, very interesting. It's definitely its own beast. I don't really think it needs to be compared to Formula 1 yeah. too closely. I think people are a little bit worried that that that's what Formula 1's going to become, but I don't think it is. Um, racing's really interesting. The rules are very different. The cars are very different. I think it's, it's an interesting kind of side piece to look at. Yeah. And especially when you're bringing Formula 1 fans in to sort of compare and say, this is a different way of doing things and, you know, but it's got its haters, but I, I think it's really interesting. And yeah, I mean, it tries its hardest to not be F1. It doesn't go, okay, we want to be as good as F1. We want to be the same. You know, it's yeah. like F1's doing this. We're going to go off this way and do yeah. something completely different. I suppose it's good for you for new content because, you know, if it's the same as F1, you're basically talking about the same thing yeah. with a different uh, title on it. But for Formula E, it just makes it a whole lot easier, I suppose, where you've got different rules and regulations to talk about. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm not... I don't watch IndyCar or anything like that, but that is another series where yeah. it's, it has its similarities, but it's gone and done its own thing mm -hmm. and branched out and it has its like three styles of racing where they have different aero packages to, yeah. um, you know, accommodate different needs. So, you know, might go down that route one point, but uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that, you know, F1 has done its own thing and 
made its own rules and shaped itself in a certain way but other people are doing different things and it's interesting to see yeah. where those go is there any other uh genres that you'd like to go into or anything that you'd like to talk about for the future that you'd like to sort of delve into i sort of starting this year i'm kind of looking at in terms of video style doing some slightly different things as well i want to make some kind of longer video essay type yep. things or i'm going to go into topics for longer maybe interview some people and and, and go in depth mm -hmm. a little bit more um sort of slightly building up two pieces at the moment one's about uh, women in motorsport which yep. i think is really interesting and has a lot of misunderstandings about so you've got w series to talk about that's just recently exactly. started as well and i've seen on twitter you're quite enjoying that too that's that's very fun as well yeah. it just started it's sort of and it's quite short so you can yeah. just it's half an hour long so you yeah. can just switch it on and enjoy it and then go watch something else um and i also want to look at uh, disability in motorsport which mm -hmm. is also really interesting because it's probably well probably one of the only sports where they're not segregated from able-bodied people yeah. and because motorsport is this blend of people and technology it's able to kind of bridge that gap yeah, so you do definitely. have just people with disabilities alongside um, yeah. races so i'm gonna have a look at that as well and those will be slightly longer videos i think where i'll sort of dive in a bit cool uh being an esports team ourselves, is there esports at all you're going to be looking into that in the uh, future i have been sort of i've got some sketchy ideas around esports and simulated races um i need to speak to the right people yeah um because there's a lot of interesting things both around the actual the rigs the simulators and stuff and what they do and around the um you know the the, the games or the simulation programs mm -hmm. and stuff and sort of how they bridge the gap to real yeah. life and and, and how that works without having to like explain 40,000 lines of code. I think there's a lot yeah. of interesting stuff to explore in there. So I have been sketching things around in there. I just need to, uh, I might have a chat. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. We have to, have to schedule something for the future. Yeah. Just getting on to e-racing. <laughs> We're talking about the main reason why you're here. Our own simulator, you've had a go. You've never really done much racing before previously, have you? No, I mean, I was very into the Codemasters F1 games, um, mostly on controller. Um, I played them quite religiously, but not in a kind of hardcore way up until yeah. about the 2014 game. Mm -hmm. And then I think, oh, I did, that's right. I didn't get a, um, a new generation console okay. for quite a while. So I yeah. kind of dropped off the radar. Uh, I've played iRacing a little bit with some cheap steering wheel and yeah. pedals, um, <laughs> which I still have. So yeah, I'm not a pro. Yeah. I have played racing games. I understand some things about <laughs> racing, but yeah, I didn't step into this as someone who expected yeah. to... Uh, beat Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Jeff is second at the moment, 127.2, um, which of course would be amazing for anyone to beat. Where do you sort of see yourself? What sort of goal have you sort of set yourself coming into it? Well, I think these names are quite optimistically placed because you haven't left a lot of room at the bottom. <laughs> um, now, I mean, I don't know if you want to Practice lap-wise, we had a few hiccups, I yeah. think. So, you know, and the fact that I managed to string a lap together at all, I think, <laughs> was a bit of a godsend. So, you know, I, if I get into this, if I'm not out of the... Yeah. This 130, sort of I, I, I wasn't really paying attention to my lap times at all, so no. I'm not actually sure <laughs> how it felt. <laughs> uh, if I'm not too far off the bottom, yeah. that would be fine. And if I put myself in a position where people can still do worse than me, I'm representing the non-racing... Yeah, I mean, community. all of these guys... Apart from maybe Niran, he's the only one who is sort of plays occasionally yeah. on his steering wheel, but has probably only touched the steering wheel like only a few times in his life. Joe, you know, plays F1 quite a lot, does sure. is a content creator on it, same with Ben and Arab. So those guys, you know, they should if you're if you're aiming around here, that's a good marker to be. Oh, yeah, I think for those guys. What's what's interesting, I mean, if people haven't been in like a, a simulator or in a actual racing car. Um, about the sim is uh, the brake pedal is incredibly short. Yeah, it is. Like you have to do a, you have to be really deft in about one centimetre yeah, worth of wiggle room. You can't just go all the way yeah. down because you'll lock up the brakes and then that will just send you straight into Which is a tire. I did barrier. for like the first seven laps. Yeah. It's like, sh um, <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to realise that's what I was doing. Whereas in like, if you've got sort of PlayStation pedals mm -hmm. at home and just something you haven't spent hundreds of pounds on, yeah. you've got a lot of travel distance. Yeah, you or if you're using a controller, you've got a lot of mm -hmm. travel distance on there. So, yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. My biceps are still feeling yeah. it because it's quite... There's, yeah, there is a lot of force feedback on, on that steering wheel. Um, 
Um, but but yeah, it's uh, other than that, you found it, you know, good. We had the BMW M8 GTE. It's quite a heavy car, but it's got quite a lot of downforce on it. It feels like you can really get it tucked into the corners quite a lot of the time. Yeah, it took, yeah. If I once I got slowed down, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good fun. I felt like I was getting more of a feel to it towards towards the end. But you know, ten laps, it's not a long time to no, sort of it's master not. it. But no. it's um, yeah, it was, it was it was definitely very interesting. Awesome. Do you want to take a look at the lap then? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at the lap. <laughs> okay. So, I've had my practice laps, and the only thing that's a problem is braking, steering, the gears, uh, but acceleration out of a corner. So apart from that, get ready to witness a master at work. So basically everything you've uh, you've shown Most things, so yeah, far. I needed a little bit of help with, yeah. Yeah, here we go though. Here we go on the lap and down in towards turn one. Let's see how you do on the brake and the accelerator and the steering and the gears through turn one. Tidy. Not quite hitting the apex, but using... Take it easy around there, because it <laughs> sucked to throw it away so soon. It would definitely suck to throw away your lap. In towards Druids, late on the brakes, maybe a bit too late as you've missed the apex, but you made did, it around the corner. I did not make it around that corner every lap in practice. No, but you made it around this time. In towards Storm, again, a little bit of a lock-up, so you're just not quite getting used to the brakes. Great face there, through that corner. A little bit of fear <laughs> in yourself through there. In towards Surtees then late on the brakes taking a late apex not clipping it but it was the right sort of apex the right sort of racing line one thing this car doesn't like me we've had a bit of a tiff i may have driven it into a wall that does tend to happen the car might not like you if you put it into a wall every now and again yeah. in towards daily corner this is famous for where ben got lost over on the gravel trap through there now in towards this next right hand again just locking up just not quite getting used to those brakes that travel on the brakes still struggling with yeah and brake and turn turning's good turning's good turn. i mean that was oh, oh god <laughs> very very good line through there sorry i swore <laughs> well, i think we're allowed this swearing through there through the right hand oh it's gone off wide onto the gravel wouldn't have lost you too much time maybe a, Take maybe a, nice a second wide line over the grass to maximize entry speed exit speed <laughs> I make videos explaining this. <laughs> very good, very good. Through this uh, penultimate corner now, through the left, not quite using the curb on the right hand side, but tidy. That's what we like so yeah. far. It's been tidy apart from that one mistake. It's been a tidy lap so far. Through the final corner then, dropping it down a gear and sort of using the track available to you. Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Look at you, you're so <laughs> eager to get to the line on the Brabham straight, coming down towards the line now, and that is your lap. I think that's it. That's the first time I haven't got spun off the track. To be fair, that was actually the first time watching off board that, yeah. that you actually did a proper lap. And to do it under pressure as well on that one flying lap, you've got to be pleased with that, surely. Yeah, I mean, I think watching that, you can see I'm being generous with the sides of the track. Yeah. I'm not taking things too far. Um, that was because I just I wanted to get a lap in. <laughs> <laughs> because I definitely explored the limits of the car. Yeah. I think um, Druid's. First time I went out, just yep. went straight on. Yeah, the definitely. <laughs> uh, over exit out of a few corners a few times, and that um, a lot of those fast corners through the mm. through the middle section of um, I definitely ran wide a lot. Yeah, there was that one mistake, wasn't there? Just running it onto the gravel, probably lost maybe about a second through there. Do you just mess up with the brakes or something through that corner? Just it's maybe a, a lock up. Corner. You're it downhill. Is. You're sort of braking as you're turning, and um, it's a shame really because that was a corner I was struggling with. I thought I got my head around yeah. it. Yeah, I think I was just. Uh, thinking too much at the time but you know it tidy ish yeah i mean it may not have lost you too much time because a few of these guys have gone wide storm went wide on a corner so yeah. did ben and they're still on pretty decent time so looking at that lap <laughs> now where do you think possibly <sighs> right well i'm still it was very concerned it was quite conservative yep so i'm probably not challenging the middle of these people but if I'm not too far away then I'll, I'll, I'll be quite happy well we can tell you that you did it in you did it in one minute so I mean that's that's, that's a, a good start. start no one's in the two minutes yet and that's what we like because if anyone's in the two minutes they've got to they're out they're yeah. done so one minute and it was a wet track you could see it yeah it was very recently. wet it was chucking it down yeah. with rain <laughs> however that's where the good news sort of ends because Stuart, Chain Bear F1, you did it in a 131.7. So. I thought you were going to say 40. I thought you were going to say so. 40. No, no. Luckily, you're not in the 40s as well. We haven't had somebody in the 40s. That does mean, however, you are unfortunately at the bottom of our board, but you're not too far away from Joe. 
And we're going to have plenty more people in who have got no sim racing experience at all. I think I've decided to choose the right career, not sim racing, but explaining racing. <laughs> explaining racing. Backseat driving, I think, is my Perfect. speciality. Well, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure it's been to great. have you on the Starter Simulator Class show. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you all for watching here today. Don't forget to like and subscribe the Veloce Esports YouTube channel. And also check out Chainbet F1. I'll put all the links down in the description below. But I've been Hayden, this has been Stuart, and we will see you on the next one. Cheers.